welcome to um, our Facebook Live tonight. I'm Dr. Maggie Yu, Functional and Holistic Medicine MD, and this is... I'm Kathy Ryan. I am the Transform Nutritionist, so I work very closely with Dr. Maggie and all of her clients on the nutrition side of, uh, of the program. Awesome. I'm so glad that some of those of you guys that are streaming in right now, I'm going to give you about um, 15, 30 seconds to stream in. Um, those of you that are watching this on YouTube later, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you get notified every time um, that we're, we're going live or that there's a new video posting. Tonight, we actually, for those of you that are watching right now, if you're an alumni, please tell us that you're an alumni. If you're currently in the program, please say you're currently in the program. What we're talking about tonight, big topic, we're, and everybody's been asking, which is what is Flu Busters for kids? We are in Flu Buster Week, and we're talking about kids, nutrition, how to support your kids uh, during this flu um, issue going on right now. And, my, um, and there are just a lot of questions, Kathy, and I'm gonna start with just something um, before we dive into nutrition which is that um, most importantly, something to clear up is that the kids are, act kids are actually at lowest risk of actually having any complication uh, from th this particular strain of the flu, okay? And what that means is, is that um, they, this is an interesting study from Korea, which basically was they took the data from the 220,000 people that they tested. What they found was that people under the age of 29 was actually a very small percentage of the population, but they accounted for like double or triple the infection, infection rate than others, but yet they didn't have any complications. When you look at deaths associated right now with it, almost none, I think right now there's really none that are children. So what that means is that their particular young people, children are actually a population that are really prone to be carriers. And what that means is, is that they have very mild disease or no symptoms but that they actually carry it to other people who are more vulnerable. So I'm gonna tell you guys the most important thing that you can do to protect yourself and your kids is actually social distancing. For them, it's gonna be difficult during this time, but that's gonna be really important. And now that they are home, we're gonna sit here and now talk about what are we gonna to do to deal with, how can we decrease the chance that they're gonna get any sort of infection? How do we prevent it? How do we um, treat it early nutritionally? So let's talk first. First, we're gonna talk is we're gonna talk about sugar. There's a huge role of sugar in feeding viral and viral infections. Those of you that are watching right now, can you tell me what struggles you're having with kids um, being home right now, um, dealing with some of these uh, issues going on? What are some of the issues? What are some of your questions around? How do I feed my kids? What do I, what's, what do I add? What do I remove? Um, if you can add, put those questions in the comment section, we're watching it. That'd be great. So um, Kathy, why is it so important to decrease sugar? Why is it ironic what people are stacking their cart with? Yeah, well, I find this so interesting because uh, we see we see a lot of this where it's like, okay, we want to make this fun for the kids. We don't want to create anxiety. We don't want to create, um, you know, we want them to remember this time as, as a fun time. So we've got parents that are loading their carts up with all kinds of snacks and treats and junk food and things like that that they normally don't even eat, um, you know, on a regular basis because this is a, a, they're trying to make it a special time. And the irony is, is that nobody's really catching on to the fact that, you know, sh sugar does sugar and, and good immune support don't go hand in hand. So the more sugar that you have, the less, um, the less you're supporting your immune system because your, your body needs to use up uh, valuable nutrients to just to deal with the sugar and the, the nutrient white food that should be going into supporting your immune system. So it's really, really important uh, that we, um, that we, uh, make sure that we are feeding our kids nutrient dense food during this time. Little treats are fine, um, but really try and make the fun part of this lockdown um, non-food related, okay? It's really important. So um, a lot of people are trying, starting to chime in, people are rolling in. Alumni, I would love for you guys to chime in with some idea, some of the things that you guys have learned in the program. And those of you that are in the program, let people know you're in the program right now. If you guys can jump in on the chat and just give, give people some of the ideas that you carried away from our program that has been really helpful in helping to feed your kids in a healthy way. Uh, one of the things I really like is the concept that I want, you guys have been given the gift of time. So many people say, I can't feed myself and my family healthily because I don't have time. Right now, we are given a lot of time at home with our families. And so I am challenging all of you to actually take this time to actually, if you don't love to cook, learn 
try recipes, engage your children in this, make this fun. I've had people in our program, I remember Christina in our program with some teens and her teens were actively menu planning with her and are now part of the, the whole family uh, eating culture is, it has become a healthy eating culture together. It's become something that they do together. Another uh, opportunity for social connection, which is something that I've talked about recently. Um, so alumni, if you guys can chime in, that'd be really super helpful. So what do you think, I mean, somebody's gonna ask, what do you think is the right balance of how much protein, fat, and carbohydrates is actually considered low sugar? <laughs> well, I, you know what, I have, I know that, um, you know, ratios of, of protein, fat, and carbohydrates are important, but I would go even higher than that and just say things like, um, you know, like you were just talking about, um, getting back into the kitchen. Well, we often, when we think about, you know, including our kids in the kitchen, we think about baking cookies, right? But why don't we get the kids, um, you know, making vegetables or making soup or making chili or something like that? Like, they don't know the difference between, you know, measuring out some flour for cookie dough versus um, helping mom cook chili or something like that. I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can make this really, really fun. We tend to put our own biases on it because we think, okay, well, the kids are obviously going to like the cookies more than the chili, but that's not necessarily true. That's our own bias that we're putting on it. The fact is, is that you're getting into the kitchen and you're having this, this social time and this interaction with your kids and you're teaching them about healthy food. So for me, that's the most important thing, even above, you know, how much carbohydrates, how much protein, how much fat should we be giving them? Um, I think I one, of the, one of the best things we can do is just make sure that we have a lot of healthy snacks on hand uh, so that, it, that, that those are the things that, they're, they, um, that are most readily available. So whether it's you know, celery sticks with some nut butter mm. or some, um, some um, um, you know, apple slices or fruit slices, oranges are big this time of year. Yeah. Any, any of those things are going to be better than prepackaged, uh, you know, chocolate bars and, and brownies and, and uh, you know, chips and cheesies or whatever it is. So I like it. start with that. I like it. The second thing that's really important for us is to talk about hydration. Hydration is really important because we need our mucous membranes hydrated to actually be able to fight off, clear, um, keep the area clean and clear infection. Um, so hydration is really important. And that's one of the things that kids do have a really hard time with. And a lot of times, a lot of kids think of hydration as sugary energy drinks or juices or milk, but specifically, what are some good examples and ways with which we can hydrate our kids? Yeah. So, I mean, my favorite is water. Uh, water is the best thing that you can give your kids to keep them well hydrated. Um, and, uh, you know, if you get them used to drinking water, as, as young kids, they don't balk at it. It's not unusual for them. Um, so they're not gonna be reaching for, you know, the apple juice or the orange juice or the pop or, or Gatorade or whatever the case may be. They're actually gonna reach for the water. Um, some other ways that you can get, um, get some increased hydration in is uh, through um, soups and broths. Um, mm. So and another thing that can be, um, you know, made in the kitchen is, is some good hearty bone broth. That is really great for the immune system. Again, we talked about this a bit the other night, how, you know, a lot of times it's grandma's recipes that we go back to for, uh, for supporting our health and our immune system and bone broth or, or stock um, is, is no different. So hydration can be through hot things as well as uh, the cold drinks. Um, but another one that I do really like, Dr. Maggie, is um, popsicles. So, you know, if you do have a child that, that does come down with uh, with a cold or flu or gets a fever, popsicles are something that can be really, really refreshing, but you don't want to go to the store-bought ones. You can actually, there's tons of recipes online uh, that you can find where you can do some, some nice, um, you know, some pureed fruit, uh, pureed frozen fruit with a little bit of gelatin and um, uh, a sugar alternative, not, a, not an artificial sweetener, but like a stevia um, or even something like maple syrup or something. Um, that you can make some really much healthier popsicles um, that are really beneficial for hydration. So I um, like this idea, which is um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be posting um, some of the recipes that we're going to talk about. We're going to be posting a popsicle <laughs> recipe on our Instagram. So uh, if you can follow us as MaggieU.MD, um, in the next couple of days, we're going to be posting some recipes. One of them is going to be the popsicle. 
Um, one of the questions people are going to ask um, is going to be, what can they sweeten um, their popsicles with? Or do they even need to now that they have pureed fruit? Like everyone thinks it has to be so sweet. Yeah, oftentimes the pureed fruit is enough. Like if you get, you know, if you get pureed strawberry or raspberry or something like that, um, that's often enough. If you do want to add something in, oftentimes something like a, a tiny drop, you get the liquid stevia, a tiny drop of liquid, liquid stevia can make a huge difference. It goes a long, long way. Um, the other option would be to add in something like honey, like a raw unpasteurized honey, or even a manuka honey. Manuka honeys tend to be a little bit more expensive, but they, um, they have a lot of uh, additional um, properties in them that have been, uh, been shown to be beneficial for uh, colds and flus. Yeah, Manuka honey has a ton of prebiotics, which is prebiotics feed the good bacteria in your gut, which is great. Um, I love it. Um, and soups, just so you guys know, is that I, if you guys haven't watched my immune boosting soup, go ahead and watch it and watch it with your kids so you can learn how to make more soup. And if you don't have an instant pot, you can use a regular stovetop pot or you can use a slow cooker. Um, there's just a lot of fun things that you can use, do with soup and soup is a great carrier for anything you want. And you can put in a ton of immune boosting herbs, um, like the ginger, um, like cumin, um, and, um, you know, garlic. tons of garlic, garlic carrots. Garlic, garlic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. Um, so the immune boosting soup recipe is on my, it's on Instagram right now. And the video is in this group as well. And on the YouTube channel. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is we forget in this country about porridge because in the, right, right now we're talking about a time when, um, you know, you want food that you can store. You may not be able to always get a lot of fresh food and, um, and porridges could be very pantry storage friendly. So you can make porridges from grains, um, and you can make, um, porridges from nut and seed. Uh, let's talk a little bit about porridge, Kathy. Yeah, so sometimes uh, we, we feel like uh, kids are not going to eat porridge, right? And again, we have to come away from this. We have to stop putting our own biases on what kids are going to eat or not going to eat. The younger we start them, the more easier it is to get them to eat some of these things. Uh, but I will say that a lot of kids do have an issue with the texture of porridge. So they, they don't, they're, it's not really the taste, it's the texture. So one of the things that I find works really, really well, actually, is to add a little bit of nut butter. So like get some almond butter and add it right into your oatmeal. And that completely changes the texture of the oatmeal so that they don't get that, because some kids will actually gag on it. Um, so we don't have that issue. And it changes the, obviously the flavor of it as well. And it's a completely different breakfast experience. And it can be something that, uh, that a lot of kids really enjoy. Yeah. And the thing is, think about this. If you think of just oatmeal by itself, it seems really boring. But man, I, I, th I think about nuts and seeds. If you put in nuts or seeds on it, and then you throw in some cinnamon, suddenly it's like a flavor explosion and a nutrient powerhouse. So for me, it's again, another vehicle with which you can just add a ton of nuts and seeds, or you could even add some fat in there. You could add butter in there um to actually add additional healthy fat or even um so there's there's ways to get creative you could add sweet sweet cream butter right into um your porridge or berries you know berries is another thing right um berries right. slivered almonds um all kinds of things chia seeds things like that so one of the biggest um, recipes that our uh, people in our program love is our nut and seed porridge. And so I'm promising you guys that what I'm gonna do is share our program nut and seed porridge recipe on Instagram uh, by tomorrow morning. So go to our Instagram account, like it, and it's gonna be exclusive for people on Instagram. You can get our nut and seed porridge. Yeah, and the other one, the other uh, recipe that I really like is, um, is, uh, is um, chocolate, uh, chocolate. Have you ever had that? Chocolate avocado pudding. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Um, chocolate avocado. Um, I remember uh, seeing Pam actually um, post a recipe and her, she cannot keep it on the shelf with her kids. Um, she cannot make it fast enough for her kids to gobble it up. Yeah. So that's another really easy way to get some really good fats into your kids. Um, and it's actually very, very low sugar. Again, there's a lot of different uh, recipes online. We can post one again on, on uh, Instagram for you in a couple of days. 
uh, we'll give you, we'll sort of spread them out throughout the day um, or throughout the week. But uh, it's got very, very low amount of sugar. So you can do it with uh, maple syrup and it's avocado and then straight cacao powder or cocoa. Um, we prefer the cacao powder, powder because it's raw, um, but it makes uh, a really, really tasty treat. Your kids won't even know that there's avocado in there and it's got so many good fats in there for them. Yeah, that's one of those recipes that our alumni have been sharing like crazy in our alumni group. And they have pictures of their kids and empty, uh, happy kids with avocado pudding, uh, chocolate pudding uh, and their refrigerator is empty because they can't keep it on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they really, really like it. Yeah, so. Awesome. So I, I hope that this has been helpful. If this has been helpful, go ahead and put into the chat that this was helpful. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, um, this is really specifically a segment dedicated to kids uh, and nutrition with kids. We, I have talked already about what are some, um, really briefly about some of the supplements uh, that you can do to help also boost your kids' immunity during this time. Um, if you want me on a future training to talk, uh, add more information about supplementation for kids during this flu season, or you can write it in the comment section as well. Uh, I can talk about that on an, another training. But tonight we're really talking food and nutrition, and I hope this was helpful. Um, we're going to be posting recipes um, the rest of this week on Instagram. So if you join us there, you're going to see the recipes posted. Alumni, all of you that are watching, and I know you're watching, I'm going to challenge all our alumni and people in our program to make posts in the main Facebook group sharing some of their favorite recipes for their kids. And that's a gift from our alumni to you guys. So that being said, thank you, everyone. Have a great night. This is Kathy, your nutritionist, and we're saying good night and have a great day. Good night, everyone. Bye. Lupus, lung fibrosis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, fibromyalgia, AS, which is a form of arthritis, bar, extremely fatigued, pretty much zero joint pain, much more happy. I don't have brain fog anymore. How much weight I have lost. I want to say remission. Maggie and her approach is very different than the traditional doctor. I'm a totally different person. I got a better understanding of what those intolerances were. You're not alone. The community is, I'm learning from all of everyone else's issues. It's not just helped me, it's helped my entire family. We are transformed. 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 Join the movement and transform your autoimmune naturally today.